Welcome back into the dirt head shed. It's time to work on Louis Vuitton and get this steering buttoned up finally. I'm back on the old Ford Super Duty steering, so We've got a little bit of work to do. We got some plumbing to do. We got some fab work to do. We got to mount some things and this and that. And then we're going to go test it out and see if it works or not. It's been a little while since we were working on this because I kind of had to sidetrack and get ready for Easter Jeep Safari in Moab. Um, basically what we're doing here is converting to high steer on the steering knuckles, uh, moving the track bar bracket, full fabrication there making clearance for more up travel on that cross member. Essentially what I'm trying to do is get all the steering up higher so it doesn't bang into rocks anymore and then add a new steering box in which is already in place and a hydraulic assist. The hydraulic assist will basically make it more effortless to turn those big 40 inch tires because these Ford trucks are not really that well known for being great steering vehicles. So. I've got most of this stuff knocked out. It's time to do a little bit of finish work and get a steering ram on it. Part of the reason the steering ram isn't done yet is because I did a final assembly on everything and I cycled the travel and the eight inch travel ram that they, um, that PSC sent for this truck wasn't quite long enough for the amount of steering angle I want to get. So, I ended up ordering a 10 inch ram from them. So, so it's time to kind of modify the brackets that I had started on before. I had the steering ram mounted in this hole here. I need to move over about two inches and mount the ram over here. now. It's late in the day and I've been kind of screwing around trying to figure out my plan here. I've got my uh, tape on the diff cover and on the tie rod and I mark center and then I cycle it one way and cycle it the other way and that's kind of how I determine how long the stroke for the ram needs to be. That's 10 inch, that's what this is. So now I'm trying to figure out how to make clearance for this at full lock. The tie rod and the bracket want to like smash that uh, steering ram in there so I'm going to go in here. I'm gonna cut all this out. We're gonna refabricate, make clearance, make new tabs, and have that thing functioning here pretty soon. Got my plasma cutter set up, and we are going to try and make some quick work out of this. This is a bunch of different layers of different metals. So it's gonna be kind of a, kind of a mess cutting it and making room, but we'll get it all sorted out. It's just metal. There's a pile in the corner, right? It doesn't need tons of clearance. I just need enough to make room for... I just need to make enough room for everything to cycle pretty well. Grab the screwdriver. I just need to make enough room that parts don't crash into each other and one of the things you definitely got to worry about is like making sure that the steering hoses have room when it's all said and done. That's something that on the Mom Spaghetti I had the steering hoses rubbing in. That's why I had to rebuild them on the trail. So I've cut enough of this track bar bracket out to where there's room for the rim. So we should be able to go in here and box this guy in, box this in, and strengthen this back up enough to where this is totally acceptable. And then I'll go in, I'll go in after that, I'll make my tabs for my ram, and then I'll add in a couple extra little gussets. It's got a hard job holding the axle centered under the rig, so I wanna make sure that this thing is like overly strong by the time we're done. I got that all chopped out, now it's nothing a grinder can't fix. So I've got this 
bottom portion boxed in and then I just went and made this guy right here. So we're gonna tack that in place and get that all boxed in. That'll give me a good spot to make tabs for the mount for the steering rim. Let's see if I can hold this and the camera and tack all in one. Stayed. That stayed. All right, let's burn this thing in. All right, on the home stretch. Come on, little Wilder, get it done. Heck yeah. Alright, that looks pretty good. One little bobble. That'll do. That's step one, I guess. Get some clearance for this thing. That's good. Tomorrow we'll make tabs. Hopefully they go pretty quick and we can just like paint all this stuff and build some hoses and drive it. Just wanna see if it all works. This thing steered so bad before. There we go. Look at that thing. That needs attention. And because that needs it, oh gosh, I almost died. Sorry, but I tripped over your lamp, AJ. I'll put it right back. Uh, I gotta get this truck done today. I, done is a relative word. I got to get it back on the road today. <clears throat> I came in here last night and I actually got a fair amount done as far as like capping this off, but I spent so much time yesterday looking at my phone and like screwing around on social media and looking at comments on, on YouTube and all that. Today I'm putting the phone down, darn it. I just got to work on this thing. I want to drive it to work tomorrow. It's Sunday, so... Hopefully tomorrow morning this thing's on the road. I really need to like cycle this again and make sure that that's not gonna crash into the steering arm when it turns all the way, but I think it's fine. When Let's I grab some cardboard and we will get this, all the cardboard cutting and all that stuff done. Make tabs, that's what we're gonna do. Pretty rad little tab, I just kinda Took some cardboard and started fitting it up in there, and this is what I came up with. It seems like it'll work out, and I'm just going to cut it out of this quarter-inch plate that's left over from an old shock tower. Oh, don't fall out of there. After a little bit of back and forth and some fine tuning, the tabs should be good to go. I'm running a washer in there as a spacer also, just to give a little bit more room on the heim joint and to give me some adjustability like later on if I needed to raise or lower that thing. Then I could just take the spacer and stack two on one side and one on the other. Uh, that fits really well there. I think that's about as good as it's getting with this. I'm going to go ahead and tack in a couple of spots that I can undo if I absolutely have to. Yeah, this thing's going to be awesome. Let me pull the caps off of this thing again and we will cycle this and see if everything is happy and gets full steering movement. That is maxed there. I'm like down to the last little sixteenths of inches right there. That is smashed on lock. 
That is lined up. So we have full lock one way. Nothing is crashing at the moment. And do we get full lock the other way? That's touching there. That's lined up. And that's full lock. And that's not crashing. This is sick. We did it. We friggin' did it. So rad. So much work. Yes! This is crazy. Check out how tight this is over here. Let me get a flashlight. This is the contraption that I'm like trying to fit all of these things in one space. And I got it. I got it. Look at that. Full lock over there. Steering is locked. This thing is going to be freaking cool. Yay. All right. I guess I'm gonna pull things apart and do some finish welding and we'll figure out how to finish this thing up. Yes! Definitely gonna have to do a, uh, I'm gonna definitely have to like flip this ram so the fittings are on the bottom and then I'm, I'm gonna have to do a little skid plate for it to protect those fittings and hoses, but this is rad. Definitely gonna work good. Come on. There we go. I'm making the little gusset contraption that's going to mount that's going to go between the track bar and the steering bracket. There we have it. I have one side in. This will be the other side to box it. Something like that and then we'll cap it all and it should just tie everything in together really nice. Kind of a quick run down that edge too because again it's like an eighth inch corner weld dude it looks good there you go you can kind of see that gusset that i made there and from this angle you can kind of see like it ties that track bar mount and then drops it down and ties it in with these tabs and into that knuckle. It's pretty, I can pretty much go like, that ain't going nowhere and uh, not be lying because that ain't going nowhere. One of the last things I got to do on the fab work on all this is double shear this uh, tie rod or the drag link mounting point. It needs a tab on the top here and it needs to be gusseted down to the steering arm itself. But before I just go and build that, I need to put a wheel on there and make sure that I'm not going to create some new problem with like the inside of the rim hitting it. Come on, wheel now. Go on your truck. Oh, please. Bumping to the left one more time. <laughs> That has to be in half. Alright, how much room do I have? You guys can see, I can't see it. Oh man, I have all kinds of room. Yeah, we're good to go. We are good to go. Let me grab a light so I can show you what I'm looking at. Here's what we're looking at. Basically, just making sure that I have clearance from the the bolt here and room for a tab before it goes over and hits the wheel and we have plenty of room right there that's good that is good if this thing had like a stock wheel on it it would be tucked in there really far and could be an issue but not these ones these things are good to go 
We have a bracket. We have tabs, we got gussets, we got all kinds of stuff going on over here. Check this out. I made this. This is kind of an oddball, odd shaped upper tab. I was just looking to see if my microphone thing was turned on. All right, we're cooking. I've got a tab that I just made that's gonna go on here. I just threw some shims in there. That's gonna go there. This is all gonna be part of this double shear system, but I also needed to make sure that I could get this bolt out so there's like some extra work involved here. This guy's gonna go here. So check this out. I was, I kind of got squirreled for a little bit and was talking with my wife about merchandise and stuff for the show. I had started a, um, obviously I have a t-shirt design and then I had started a, a Shopify page and then I totally lost interest in it and couldn't figure out how to like make it happen easily. So if you guys are interested in in merch for the dirt head shed let me know i uh, i'm trying to figure out if i want to just go through a fulfillment center if i want to try and do it all on my own so if you have information on who to use or who's using what i would be totally down to hear it because i'm pretty new to all this stuff and i need to get on the bandwagon because shirts are cool and making a little bit of money on the side is cool and it would be uh it would be rad if i could just keep growing this page and channel and all that and and make like make the real deal out of it you know all right i'm going to grab the welder and we're going to burn this puppy in and then we're going to have a pretty rad little double shear deal going on ah my welder's way over there these are the fun little projects that help you Stay motivated on these projects, on the big projects. This, this little, this little gusset thing has kind of had me stumped for a little while. Getting right in here and knocking it out is the way it gets done. Oh, there's that bolt I was missing. It's a good thing I didn't forget that there. Seems like forever ago that I was welding these high spear arms onto these knuckles. This project is definitely drug out far longer than I ever anticipated it. Dude, ripping. Check it out. A little double shear, plus I can get the bolt out. It all welded up pretty good. You should clear at full lock with these, like, these corners being recessed out like that. There we have it. I got primer going on everything. This is for the drag link that attaches to the steering knuckle. That's that piece that I just built, and it's all boxed in and welded and looking good. The track bar bracket gusseted down to the steering ram mount with like the pocket for the rim there. It's all dialed and primered. The stuff that I did before is kind of getting finished up. That's where the uh, that cross member got trimmed up so that we get the up travel and don't have uh, have stuff with the track bar crashing into it. So all these little tricks hopefully will add up to something that works really good. It is Sunday night at like 8.30. I need to go get some rest. Yo, it's Tuesday. I just got home from work a little bit ago and I need to put some hours in on this thing. I got the paint done the other night, or done. I mean, I got the stuff that was bare metal is painted. So tonight, let's put some things back together. Let's get track bar in and tightened up. I kind of need to get a list together for hardware that I might be missing. So tonight we're going to sort of like bolt things back together. 
hopefully get it to where I can go pick up hardware tomorrow on my lunch break. And then we will get back in here and button up the last few things. Cause I really, you ever have a hard time getting a bunch done on work nights? I used to totally kick butt. Like Mondays were my jam. I would come home from work on a Monday and like overdo it big time to where like Tuesday I was pretty much useless at work. But I'm not really kicking as much butt as I used to and I need to change that. Check this little trick out. I needed to remount this brake line bracket. So I just welded a little 516 bolt onto the frame. I'll tighten that nut and washer on there and boom, brake line is mounted and secured. There we go. You want to get this stuff tight, but not so tight that it deforms those high misalignment spacers in there because you can you can kind of crush those and when they when they deform and they like shrink up on the bolt man it's hard to get everything apart at that point there it is all the bars are in place i've got like a couple little pieces of hardware i gotta buy at work tomorrow and then uh, we'll get in here we'll make hoses for this ram and route that stuff, get the reservoir put up top. My pile of parts is getting smaller and my truck is getting closer to being on the road. So all is good in the dirt head shed. It's Wednesday, I'm in the shop. It's after work, obviously. I got some of the proper hardware for this thing. So I've kind of got that sorted out. I went ahead and put like a new bolt in the in the pitman arm here, I loctited the pitman arm nut. I did a couple extra little things like you can see here. I put this nut on here, but then I also drilled through it and put a cotter pin in it. So just kind of going through. It's got all the seals at boots on everything. So I think I'm going to try and get a couple of the hydraulic lines made from the ram over to the box real quick. These are going to be the hydraulic lines that go from the pump to the ram. All right, I think I've got one of the hoses sorted out. So this is going to be the one that turns the vehicle passenger. And I've got that line wrapped around the back here and then looped up going along the track bar and then it's getting up to the steering box way over there. And I think I've got clearance on all the things that I need clearance on. I've got a pulley over here that I've got to keep uh, tabs on. I got to make sure that the pitman arm doesn't hit it as well over here. So there's a bunch of stuff going on. I think this one is kind of in the right zone. So I'm going to kind of lock it down and call it good. And then we'll fit the other one in and that'll be the one that turns the Ram driver. Check it out. Made a hose. I think I got the clocking right on it. We will see. We will see. So this one goes up over on the top of the box to the regular high pressure hose. And then this should loop around and get onto the pump. Man, this is a lot of stuff. High pressure pump to box hose is on. Heckin' cruising, man. Kidding me? I'm like pros at this. Let's see. It might, we might fire this puppy up and it'll be like a sprinkler system, just squirting fluid everywhere. Good morning. It is early Friday morning. This work week really kind of screwed up my progress on old Louis Vuitton. So it's time to get busy. We're gonna try and get this thing to where it is steering and functional. And then I wanna try and get a video out today still. So we gotta get busy. Um, I've got it back down in down on the ground sort of 
and it's time to mount the reservoir, steering reservoir and this oil cooler or the power steering cooler. These both have to go on. I got to make the hoses that go with that and then we should have a functioning system. So let's see what we can make happen. It's time to get the power steering cooler put on this thing. It originally had a fin style, kind of like this condenser here that bolted on and they want you to run one of these, which is a little bit higher flow, I believe. It's got like large half inch hoses on it. So I've got to find a way to mount this cooler so that it's strong and doesn't try and break off of here ever. It's kind of a heavy unit to just be hanging off. So I'm trying to figure out if I want to try and mount it over here that might be a little more solid or if I want to put it where the factory one was so that it's in front of the radiator and condenser and it's actually getting some help from the fan or if I just need to find a new spot for it. So let's tackle this real quick. In the interest of getting this done quick and easy, I'm going with this aluminum that I had out. And we will, we're just gonna make it work. All right, so I've got my two side pieces. One's a little shorter than the other and we should be able to go and like bolt these to the core support. I'll have to drill a couple holes and then we should at least have a starting point. This guy will go over here. This one will go over here. These are at sort of different planes and nothing about them is totally equal, but they're going to do just fine for what we got going on. I need more hands. What just fell? Of course, my little adjuster fell out of my vice grips. We'll put that in later. They are absolutely maxed out. This is awesome. Let's get it some tacks on this thing so that we can sit back and admire the work. Best off welding as much of this as I can while it's like in the rig and bolted because it'll move around if I pull it out and try and weld it. Oh, stuck the tungsten bad. That one was bad, but not as bad as the other side. Ah! That one's not terrible. Close up shot of the bracket and the cooler. Not too bad. It'd be cool if it had support on the bottom, but there's really not much to go to on the front of this rig. Let's keep moving. We'll get things farther along and then if there's a problem, yo, we'll solve it. I'm moving on to the power steering reservoir. So this thing holds all the, the reserve of fluid and then it also has like an output that goes down to the pump and an input that comes back from that cooler and then it has another input that's for a, a auxiliary input that would be for a hydro boost setup but this truck doesn't have a hydro boost so that won't get used. And I broke out the old cardboard and goldfish box again and check this bad boy. Ouch! I just hit my head on the I hit my head on the hood. Check this bad boy out. This is a cardboard template that is going to become an aluminum piece that the uh, that the reservoir is going to mount to. So this is going to have a lip that folds over and goes up to the factory holes or the factory um, nut tabs that are up here from the, the stock reservoir and then this will have a little pedestal that it sits on. It'll get bolted in on the bottom here 
and then in the back as well. After a bunch of work on the bandsaw, I got my piece cut. There's my cardboard template. And I went ahead and made the aluminum piece kind of how I wanted it. And now we're gonna bend it up and make it to where it actually bolts up to the fan shroud, I guess you'd call it. And then has a little platform down here for the uh, reservoir to mount to. So let me mark this up and then we'll go bend it and see if it all works out. This one is gonna be like 90 degrees. If this bender will get it. It's kind of set up for a thin sheet metal at the moment. Ugh. That'll get us started. Let me get this one started as well. Let me get us started there. I think we're going to go over to the press and use my little homemade press brake to get it the rest of the way. Let's see where we can get with this. It's not perfect, but it's just a piece of round bar on some other stuff and then some angle iron to create a V over here. We will see if I can bend sharp enough with it. I may have to put, I may have to get it started and then put a smaller piece of round bar in there to get a tighter radius. This little tool is not perfect by any means, but it's definitely Got me out of a bind a couple of times. Here's that bracket, a little more angle on it, and I drilled a couple holes. I got this piece of plate mounted to the old mounting tabs for the original power steering reservoir. Now this PSC one is gonna go and live there. That's pretty cool. I need to need to mess with the bends just a little bit to get it away from the radiator hose but i think we have ourselves a winner okay we're back on the tig welder check this out this is that bracket that i was making and then i just did a little side gusset on it so that it supports the thing from the bottom it also gives it a couple more mounting points so i need to finish this job this shop is just a stinking disaster right now. All right, let's see if we can weld this plate better than I did that square tube or that angle iron. kicking butt at the aluminum welding today, that's for sure. I need to try something different. Boom, just like that. Dig it. Let's go put it in the truck, quit screwing around. All right, the reservoir is in and solidly mounted. I'm stoked on this. Super stoked. So now it's just time to run hoses from the cooler that I installed over here um, we get to run our fill line down to the pump. We can fill this thing up, fire it up. So these are the fittings that it's using for the feed line. This is like a giant, like three quarter inch, uh, three quarter inch push on hose. And it uses a barb fitting. So each, these ones are far easier to build than those, those other types. Ugh. Basically these uh, push on fittings, the way it works in this type of stuff is that there's a weave inside of the, there's like a, a fabric weave inside of the hose. And the, the way the weave works, it's kind of like a Chinese finger trap where like as this thing has pressure and pulls against it, the weave actually gets tighter. So they go on, but then they don't come off very easily at all. So. There's my feed line. This will go from the pump to the, actually it'll, the feed line will go from the reservoir down to the pump. Hello. Hey, I'm just pulling up. Okay, cool. Um, let me go put Hazel inside so you can drive up. Woohoo! Parts are showing up for my Ford. Let's go check this out. 
special delivery from my buddy Jesse. Freshies for mom's spaghetti. Oh, these are going to be great. These are in far better shape than the last ones. Yeah, they're broken. There's a crack there and this one's pretty much broken in half. But it's broken in better half than my other one. I think it's gonna be awesome. All right, I gotta get back to work. Check this out. While Jesse was here, I did a little bit of plumbing and got a, another couple of hoses and fittings done. So we got one going to the um, cooler that runs down here to the steering box. And then the other one out of the cooler is gonna go up there to the, uh, that reservoir. So I just gotta make one more hose and we can fire this thing up. Try not to cut my thumb. Oh my gosh, I've just got too much stuff everywhere. This is crazy. I'm about to lose it. I'm about to lose it. Time to get some oil in this system. Oh, that's not good. Time to get some oil in here. This stuff is Swepco 715. This is like the best of the best when it comes to power steering fluid. I'm not sure why, but it is. One quart in, it's not pouring on the floor yet. That's good. Let's see if we can cycle some bubbles out of here. Is it doing anything? It sounds like it's bubbling every time I turn it. All right, I'm going to let that kind of do its thing for a little bit and then we'll crank it up and we'll figure out how much more bubbles we've got in here. It's going to be a lot. I think we're ready for a startup. Hopefully this battery's still got some juice in it. This looks like a good battery tightener. I guess it's time to fire this puppy up. I'm going to set the camera right here. And then you guys tell me if something goes haywire. to it pretty close and then we're gonna put this thing back together and drive it that's it for this dirt head shed thank you guys for hanging in there this is a huge project and it's coming to an end so hopefully we can throw this throw the old shocks back in their wheels on it and go test this soon 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 all right we'll see you guys next week